Hello, everyone. Welcome to our session on financing your education. My name is Samuel Ortiz, and I'm the Education Outreach Specialist for Sparks. Sparks is a student-led organization here at Arizona State University. We're dedicated to increasing college readiness and awareness. And today, we have some of our ambassadors that are going to be discussing how they finance their education here at Arizona State University. And we'll have Faith uh, take us away. Right. Hello everyone, my name is Faith Rodriguez. I graduated in May of 2019 with a degree in anthropology and communication. Um, as of right now, I am the AmeriCorps volunteer for ASU Access Sparks. So the reason that I chose to go to ASU was because I got in, which was a really easy thing for me to decide on initially. Um, I did get the application fee waived, so that was really exciting for me. Um, at the time, I was a homeless student in high school, so I felt that I couldn't go because I needed financial assistance to be able to go to the university. And I was able to actually file a FAFSA as being an independent student. So instead of relying on the dependent status where I would utilize the information from my parents, because I was working at the time, I was able to file as an independent. So that's one of the ways that I was able to fund my education was by getting financial assistance from the government. So I did receive um, a couple of grants from the university, like the college attainment grant, which did cover a big majority of the money that I would owe towards my tuition. Um, along with that, I was able to apply for a few private scholarships, which did cover um, some of the more expensive details of my education, like getting um, a new laptop, like getting books, um, because it did outline in that scholarship what I was able to do with it, so I did do that. Um, on top of that, I did work for an institution named Education at Work, where I was given the opportunity to work part-time and receive um, tuition assistance towards my education. So that money was given to me outright. And on top of that, I did, of course, work with AmeriCorps, which offered me an education award on top of part-time work while I was in school to pay for my education. So that's a little bit about how I funded my education, how I got to ASU. Um, what about you, Paco? Uh, hey guys, so my name's Joaquin Ramos, but everyone calls me Pato, so like you guys will hear Sam and Faith refer to me as that. It just means duck in Spanish. Uh, I'm currently a senior at ASU. Uh, I'm studying criminal justice, and I actually graduate in, I think we're down to two weeks now, so kind of nervous, kind of cool, kind of exciting. Um, and the way I financed my education was primarily through Thing ASU calls the uh, Barack Obama Scholars Program. Um, and we'll elaborate on all that during um, the rest of the session, but very briefly, um, what the Obama Scholar is, is simply uh, my senior year in high school, I filled out and submitted my FAFSA, uh, sent that to ASU, uh, and then ASU uses all of the tax information and expected family contribution on FAFSA. Um, and it was able to offer me the Obama Scholar, which covered a lot of my direct costs. So tuition, housing, meals, different things like that. Um, and it formulated like an entire financial aid package along with a couple other scholarships that we can go over, uh, a couple grants. And then uh, I, like Faith as well, was able to get a work study, which I know Faith will go over later exactly how work study and all that works. Uh, but basically, I was also able to work part time. Uh, at ASU and I was able to finance my education using um, that money on top of the financial aid package that I had already received as well. Uh, and the reason I chose ASU, very simple, they offered me the most money. Uh, I applied to all three in-state universities uh, and ASU was the, ASU offered me the best financial aid package out of the other two. So that's why I'm a Sun Level. Perfect. Um, so I know we mentioned a couple of buzzwords, right? When we talk about financing your education, we always hear the word FAFSA, we always hear financial aid, federal work study. So we're going to take these next couple of minutes to go a little bit deeper into what all of that means. And we want to start with FAFSA. So FAFSA, for those out there, stands for the Free Application for Federal Student Aid. Emphasis on the free. You don't have to pay. <laughs> you're paying, you're doing something wrong. Uh, but we'll have Bato share a little bit more about his experiences with FAFSA, especially for both of you, um, Faith and Pato, what that first experience 
um, fill, uh, filling out your FAFSA was like? Yeah, so like I said, the FAFSA was probably the most important part of my scholarship that I was able to get in my entire financial aid package. Um, so filling it out my first time senior year in high school was definitely a, like a nervous moment, um, a little stressful because uh, it asks a lot of questions. And at first glance, it seems like it takes a lot of time to actually like fill out. Um, it asks, you know, tax information, social security numbers from you and your parents. You have to create a specific, uh, what they call an FSA ID for yourself and your parents. Um, it starts talking about like assets and a bunch of different stuff that, you know, a lot of students like myself might not even know. Um, so like if you're first generation or, um, something like that, um, so the first time was definitely stressful. It took me, I want to say, maybe around an hour, hour and a half. It definitely took me a lot longer than it should have, um, simply because, you know, the second, third, fourth time around, it took maybe 15, 20 minutes, just because everything gets pre, pre-filled out once you do it the first time. Um, so the first time is definitely the hardest, but then it just gets easier after that. Awesome. So like I was saying, my situation was different. Um, I was homeless my senior year of high school. And that was the whole FAFSA um, application was actually the reason why I was really debating on whether or not I wanted to go to ASU because I didn't have my parents' financial information and it was just terrifying for me. So I did deny ASU quite a few times before they were finally like, wait, that's your biggest issue? No worries, just come in, we'll deal with it. Um, So just to reiterate, I did file as an independent. So that means I used my own financial information in comparison to um, a dependent, which is similar to like Bapo's situation where he used his parents' information. So I did receive assistance with that. And when I tried to do it on my own, once I basically understood what was being expected of me because I was working at the time, it did take me like two and a half, three hours. And at that point, I'm just like, okay, I feel like I'm doing something wrong. I'm getting all these weird error messages. So I was able to go to the financial aid office at ASU to get that assistance. And they were very welcoming, very understanding of my situation. And after that, I was able to apply on my own very easily. A lot of that information is saved from your previous year. Things like, you know, what you earned this year, what your parents earned this year, those things will change yearly. But the big bulk of everything that you needed to fill out the first time, that's completely saved in the system. So it was rough at first, but once you get through it, they make it extremely easy for you. Um, As long as you're meeting the deadlines, you'll be perfect. And best way to finance your education is fill out the FAFSA and all of the grants and things like that come that come with it are very helpful. So definitely want to fill that out. If you need help, go get it. Yes. And finding those resources that will help you along the way is important. What I have pulled up here um, is the studentaid.gov website. This is where you'll go for all things FAFSA. This is where you can go through the application process create your FSA ID. And the cool part about this website is towards the middle, it's broken down what exactly needs to be done at specific stages. So let's say you're a senior or a junior in high school and you're considering uh, ASU or any other institution, considering schools where you'd go and then as the years go by, it it breaks it down in that way. It even has a parent section, so you can provide that information with your parents and go through that talking process. Um, So I definitely recommend checking out, again, studentaid.gov. This is a great uh, resource for you, and this is just another way to ensure your success as you transition to higher education. Um, But one of the biggest ways that you can transition to higher education is talking about scholarships and applying for scholarships. And I know, um, Pato, you mentioned the Obama Scholars Program uh, earlier in your story. So I want you to touch on uh, what your experience has been in terms of finding scholarships and what your uh, what tips you would provide for students. Yeah, of course. Um, let me share my screen so I can pull that up. 
Okay, so what I have pulled up here is the uh, Barack Obama Scholars Program uh, website. So it's just students.asu.edu slash Obama. Um, and it explains a little bit about what the Obama Scholar is. Um, these are basically some of the eligibility requirements for it. Um, so it's open to Arizona residents admitted to ASU, uh, full-time uh, first-year students. So it is available only for high school seniors at the time. Unfortunately, if you decide to do um, an associate's degree or go to community college first, you won't be able to get it when you transfer over to ASU. Um, so it is only for first-time, uh, first-year students, sorry. Um, you must enroll at ASU in the beginning of the fall semester immediately after Arizona high school graduation. Um, as I said, the way ASU um, grants the Obama scholar scholarship to students is through your FAFSA information. So what they are looking at on your FAFSA is that you can demonstrate uh, a family income of 42,400 or less. They do have a little bit of leeway on the 42,400, just depending on the amount of dependents, um, if only one parent works, different stuff like that. So each case is reviewed separately and it, it's all done on a case by case basis. Um, here you can see some of the deadlines. So uh, students must submit their FAFSA and have a complete ASU admissions application on file by the priority deadline of January 15. Um, and then all requested documents for financial aid verification must be sent by July 1st. Um, basically how it works is ASU will take your estimated direct cost and then subtract your uh, expected family contribution, which is on your FAFSA. Uh, and then whatever is left up is what would be covered or covered as much as they can with the Obama Scholars Program. Um, and what the scholarship actually entails is a different combination of all of these here. So whether that's Pell Grants, institutional grants, <clears throat> sorry, given by ASU, uh, LEAP grants, work study, as Faith was mentioning earlier, different scholarships, um, things like that. Um, and a lot of the stuff that it directly covers is tuition, housing, meal plans, uh, you get a stipend for books that you can um, apply to your MyASU website. Um, and then, funny enough, it grants, I mean, I'm sorry, it covers a semester of study abroad, which I was able to take advantage of, and I spent an entire semester in Madrid. So it's, I, I'm biased, but I think it's ASU's best scholarship. Um, and it's very easy to attain as well. You just, it's, basically filling out the FAFSA and sending it to ASU, that's your application for it. Um, and then on top of the Obama Scholars Program, there's a lot of different scholarships that ASU does offer as well. Um, so this one is the Financial Aid and Scholarship Services website. So again, students.asu.edu slash scholarships. Um, and these are just a bunch of different ones um, that ASU either offers or they recommend students to fill out. Um, another good one that I had or have was this New American University Scholarship one. Um, and that is basically given to you based on your ACT or SAT scores. And it can range anywhere between 2,000 a year to upwards of eight or 10,000 a year, I believe. Um, but the best part on here is if you see right here where it says scholarship search, and you can just click on it here, and it'll take you to ASU scholarship portal where you can literally search thousands of scholarships. Um, the reason you only see four here is because these are the deadlines already. Um, so a lot of the new scholarships for the upcoming year either haven't been posted or because I'm a senior, they won't pop up here because a lot of them are for undergrad students only. Um, but you can search and you can put in a bunch of different filters uh, your GPA, your ACT score, different things like that. And it'll give you a variety of scholarships, um, whether according to your finances or according to your major at ASU, um, you could qualify for and you simply apply to them. Um, and you can see here how much the award is, whether they're need-based. So need-based means um, if they look at your finances or not, um, and then the deadline for each of these scholarships. 
and then oh yeah and then sam will go over the admissions requirements for asu with you guys yes so the way Pato mentioned uh having an admissions application at asu and also your fafsa keep in mind that these are asu's admission requirements we have uh, what we call a four, three, two, one. So we have four years of English and math, three years of lab sciences, two years of social sciences, uh, including one year of American history, two years of the same second language. So it has to be two years of Spanish, two years of French, um, not a mix and match. And then one year of fine arts or a career in technical education. And those are what we call the course competency requirements. You also need to meet one of the aptitude requirements listed uh, on the right hand side of the screen. So you have your top, whether you're top 25% of your high school graduating class, have a 3.0 GPA, have an ACT test score of 22 or an SAT test score of 1120. For those scholarships like uh, the Barack Obama scholars, as long as you meet those admission requirements and you, um, meet the $42,400 uh, financial requirement from your parents' income, you're um, considered um, for the Obama scholarship. It's not a guarantee. It also matters with, uh, with varying factors, but it is an opportunity. Um, and the biggest opportunities that we can have also, uh, I know you both mentioned your experience with federal work study and working on campus. Uh, Faith, would you want to share your experience on how you've been able to finance your education beyond scholarships, beyond grants, great support um, through those in, uh, financial supports, but there's more to it, right, Faith? Oh, definitely. And I am going to share my screen just so we can get a look at what is federal work study. We've been talking about it a lot. This is something you can find on the Federal Student Aid website. So that's studentaid.gov. And federal work study is a part-time job. And usually it is going to maintain that part-time position status. It is different if you're a graduate student. Um, so it is gonna be paid hourly typically, um, whereas it would be salary if you were like a graduate student. And you would earn an hourly wage and then that money would go towards paying your tuition. So that's things like room and board, um, sometimes books, and of course that main big chunk of tuition. In my journey through college and paying for it, I actually never received the opportunity to do a federal work study. However, that is not the only way that you can pay for your education. So I'm gonna switch over and show you my finance tab. So one of the things that I did is I worked for an institution named Education at Work, and it is very similar to a work study. It did give me the opportunity to work a part-time hourly position and earn money for tuition assistance at the same time. So this is slightly different from federal work study where usually the money that you're earning, earning is going directly towards your tuition. I was actually able to do both at the same time. So get money for school and have a little bit of money in my pocket. So education at work, they would determine your need based on if you filed a FAFSA and based on your grades. So having good grades did of course determine the amount that you were able to earn. I received a 4.0 GPA, so I did receive their highest amount, which was that $3,668. Um, and it was tax-free, which was really cool. So very, again, very similar to any kind of aid that you would be receiving, that is all um, tax-free. So just to show you a little bit of what that looks like, this is their website. They are partnered with ASU. Um, it does give you, like I said, the opportunity to work a part-time job as well as receive that tuition assistance. So this is where I had worked for um, two and a half years and it did give me the opportunity to receive these tuition awards. So if you are given the opportunity to work with a position that does offer tuition assistance or any kind of tuition reimbursement, which is where you would have to work, pay for school first, and then they'd give you that money back as a reimbursement check. That's a really great way for you to pay for your education. There is also, of course, 
student employment that you can get on top of that. A lot of these do offer the opportunity to be a federal work study. If not, you can still work a part-time job on campus. And they do have on-campus and off-campus jobs that are partnered with the university, which is just a great opportunity for you to enhance your skills, but also pay for school. And of course, it does vary depending on what you want to do. You could always work in the residency halls um, as a floor manager, and that's another way for you to pay for your schooling as well. Now, a thing that I also did to pay for my education, which is this really cool kind of hidden secret was I worked with AmeriCorps. So I work with AmeriCorps right now, but I also did it while I was in school. And they do offer an education award. It's called the Seagal Education Award. And depending on how often you're working, again, that's going to be hourly, um, you're given an education award at the end of your service term. Those things definitely vary, but it's another really great way for you to earn money for school and have a little bit of money in your pocket on top of it. So it did help me cover a lot of things like books, the things that um, sometimes I was missing out on when it came to scholarships. So I did receive um, $1,230 from AmeriCorps to help go towards my education. So these are some of the things that you can do. There's a wide variety of opportunities for you to pay for school beyond just scholarships and grants. If you're willing to get out there and work for your education, it definitely pays off and there's so many ways to do it. All right, so I'll give it over to Sam. Thank you, Faith and Bethel for your insights today with everything related to financial aid. Before we close out today, I do want to go over one more useful resource. Let me share my screen again. Oh, not this one. Apologies. So what I have pulled up here is the students, uh, the financial aid website for ASU. Uh, this will provide detailed steps of what needs to be done um, uh, when you're looking at your financial aid. So you have the step one, learn ways to pay for college. And the cool thing, you click on each of these hyperlinks, it's gonna take you to another link that'll go in deeper. So I definitely recommend taking a look at this website when you are ready to apply for ASU and you're ready to get started on the next start of your journey. Now, before we close out, what tips do you have, um, Faith and Pato, about financing your education. What's one thing you wish you would have been told when you were a senior in high school about your education? Um, I guess I'll go first. Um, the one thing I wish I would have known is that there's literally um, millions, if not billions of dollars out there for students um, for their education that people would literally just give them to go to college. Um, I was very selective in my like scholarship search, I guess you want to say. Um, and I would only search for like scholarships or apply, even apply to scholarships that I was pretty sure I would get or that I was like overly qualified for. Um, but there are scholarships out there for like, there, there's scholarships out there if you're left-handed, if you have colored eyes, um, if a student really enjoys Chick-fil-A, they can dress up as a cow and hold and eat more chicken sign on Instagram and they'll literally qualify for a $1,000 scholarship. And I think that's the funniest thing I've ever learned in my four years at ASU. And it's not just that one, there's hundreds and thousands of scholarships just like that one. Um, so literally, you know, all it'll take is, you know, 30 minutes of your time to just go on and apply for one scholarship a day, even if that's what you do your entire senior year. Um, the worst these scholarships are going to do is say no. And you're going to go, okay, thank you. And you're going to turn around and you're going to apply to the next one. Um, because by the end of your senior year or even halfway through it, you could have accumulated the entire um, cost for your first, second, third, even your entire college career. So there's money out there and students just need to take advantage of every single penny. Yeah. I totally agree. And one thing I really wish I knew when going into um, the university setting is that you don't have to be 18 to apply for a scholarship. I did not know that. I did not know that they would hold this money for you until you were admitted into the institution of your choice. I had no idea that that was an option. 
And on top of that, um, there is this really amazing website. It's called Raise Me. Let me just share my screen so I can show you all what that looks like. This is Raise Me. This is a way for you to start saving for college right now. And this is how it works. Of course, you're going to select, um, I'm a student. If there's parents, educators watching, this is a great resource for your students as well. You're just gonna select whichever one applies to you. So you're going to sign up and then you're going to add your achievements. So these are like micro scholarships. So these are small amounts of money that are gonna be going towards your education. And you do that by assigning yourself a goal. If you receive an A on a really hard math test, then you put that in. And if you meet that goal, then people can actually match that number for what you need for your institution and give you that money. And then that money is being saved in Raise Me. And again, it's saving up, it's working itself through, you keep adding achievements, you keep meeting them, and you keep getting more and more money. And again, these are like micro scholarships. So you can be doing this and applying for other scholarships at the same time. It is never too early to start. You do not need to be 18. If you have any questions, this is what parents are for, this is what educators are for to help you out with that. But this is some of um, some examples of what these goals would look like. So, hey, I got an A for this. You know, you can get $1,000 for this. I became, you know, president of my club at school. That's another $1,500. And this is not only for ASU. This is for basically any institution that you would like to go to, community college, a university setting. This is, this is the coolest thing I think I've ever, I've ever learned about. I really wish I would have known this when I was in school. I mean, look at this. She earned $54,000 towards her education. That is absolutely insane. I, I really wish I knew this. And this is an amazing resource. Again, that is raise.me. Really simple. You sign up. You can get started today. And like it says, you can start earning even if you're in ninth grade. So that's uh, definitely what I wish I would have known going into the university setting. Awesome. And the cool part of Raise Me all is that it's also linked within the scholarship website that Joaquin showed a little bit earlier. So thank you again, Faith and, and Bato for sharing your insights on what it's like to finance your education. And if you have any further questions, um, you can always email us at asusparks at asu.edu. And we'll do our best to connect with you and make sure you feel supported throughout this process. Thank you so much and go Devils.